Okay, thank you ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to uh, this session. Uh, thank you for for your your kind of approval to the invitation for you to be in this session uh, here in Fiji because we'll be looking at uh, uh, the rights-based approach into the Fiji youth uh, policy. Uh, there's a need to review the policy and that's why I have you experts, the human rights experts, to really help me uh, uh, to have this rights-based uh, approach in towards um, uh, youth development uh, in the country. I hope you've had uh, enough sleep and you're not jacked leg from where you've been uh, traveling from. Uh, there you have a nice picture of uh, youths in Fiji. You will see that youths, they are the energy, they are the force. If we drive them well, we'll drive them to a good uh, a track where we can have a prosperous uh, national development. But if we drive them uh, towards uh, maybe negativity, uh, you will see that there will be a lot of uh, destructions in the, in the community. I was up last night also here at home in Fiji and I saw the news. There's a lot of uh, um, upheaval at home in Hong Kong. So you will see that youths, we really need to recognize their voice and their opinion. Uh, by saying that, uh, this is just an outline of the activity that I'll be uh, uh, taking us through. Uh, first of all, we'll discuss the objective and then the introduction. Why are we really here? What are we supposed to do? Uh, why did you accept my invitation to come to Fiji? And then uh, we'll have the activity is called brainstorming. You know, I just came back from Geneva. I learned a lot of methodology. So I'll be using this brainstorming uh, with you guys today. And then uh, we'll just debrief, conclude, and then that's it for, for this session. Uh, by way of objective, you will see towards the end of this session, uh, you as participants should, uh, first of all, examine the youth globally and also in the Fijian context so that you can understand. And then after that, uh, perhaps you can describe how youth policy can have a rights-based approach. For your information, our objective is a reminder to this side, so it just helps us, it guides us while we are going through our program, our, our session. Uh, introduction and by way of facts for you, those are the basic facts in the country, uh, arriving into the country, you've seen that there is about 32% of the population who are youths, and then issues affecting them, climate change, business, domestic, um, uh, domestic violence, gender-based violence, unemployment, reproductive health, communicable uh, disease, and, uh, and for this, there is a need to review our policy. Anyone of you knows uh, the amount of youth we have in the world, total population of youth around the world? About? Uh, same percentage? Uh, yeah, it's about uh, 1.9 billion uh, youths in the world. Highest uh, development, developing countries or development, uh, developed countries or underdeveloped? Which one? Underdeveloped. It's a underdeveloped. Underdeveloped? Uh, uh, yeah, developed. It's deve uh, developed? The highest number is in underdeveloped, underdeveloped countries. Okay, uh, that's good. Um, Sometimes they call them underdeveloped, sometimes they call them developing countries. That is still developing. Eh? So developing countries have 90% of the youth population. Uh, now moving on. In terms of uh, our activity today, you will see that uh, through our brainstorming, you are the experts in uh, human rights. So the question uh, is really, uh, using this brainstorm, uh, what are the benefits of having a rights-based approach towards uh, uh, youth policy now that we're going to review the youth policy? So, can I have someone who wants to start? Yeah. Ensure sustainability. Ensure sustainability, good. So it's sustainability, yeah, good. That's a very good answer. Before we proceed, though, yeah. what, what do you mean by a rights-based approach? A rights-based approach, as you know, um, in any youth policy, 
there might be uh, thematic areas that you need to consider while you're looking at the youth policy. Some of the youth policy are up and running, but does not really have the rights-based approach. The rights-based approach is really looking at it from the treaties, from the conventions, like uh, what uh, a good friend had mentioned, the sustainability of things. So it's really the whole uh, rights in terms of um, the concepts and the idea of human rights, yes? It includes like basically inclus inclusion, participation, inclusion? Good. Um, participation in like uh, political decision making, um, and creating also whether it would be educational or vocational trainings, mm -hmm. whether they go to the academic system or vocational. So you're talking about non-formal and formal education? Well, they're called vocational, I want to Vocational, say, yeah. Those are also, self, uh, that's, that's, that's a very good uh, way to say it. Yeah. And also vocational comes under the TEV, TV, they call it also, around the world. That's the whole thing. Yeah. Technical, vocational, education, and training. Yeah? Right. Well, uh, so or academic universities. Yeah, academic universities, so they more into the, the formal education. Right. And if they, we don't include we don't create such a policy and rights-based approach, they will have to find ways and means to um, uh, find ways to eat and, and ends up being criminality. Sure. They'll end up being joining rebel groups or sure. uh, organized crime groups. So sure. if we don't be proactive towards creating a, a rights-based approach policy, it, it, it will backfire in another way where it will create chaos. That's very true. Okay, last one. Anyone? Plus grabs? Yes. Leaving no one behind. Leaving one, no one behind. Okay. So, uh, to summarize uh, the, so the um, and, and recap on the, the submissions that you've given, it's really good that you've uh, understood the sustainability of it. The inclusion, most of the time youths are not included in high level discussions. Here in Fiji we talk about the COP25, the COP26, most of the time they are only on the sideline. We want to mainstream uh, youth policies into national and international agenda. Participation, I'm quite happy that I came back also from Geneva, there's a particular guideline on participation and uh, this is all to respect uh, youth in their civic and participation right. Uh, also, decision making, they should have the right to go to those who are doing the policy to tell them, hello, we are the youths. This is the numbers that we have. We have the right to give our submission. And of course, training, which is very important. Now, going back to uh, recap, I thank you very much again for making the time coming all the way from your own countries to make the time for this session. I'll just go again, recap on our objective at the end of this session. Uh, the whole reason why we did this session is, first of all, for you to understand the global context uh, and the Fiji context, and also describe how the youth policy could have a rights-based approach. Okay. And then to conclude, we cannot always build the future for our youth, but we can build our youth for the future. Thank you. Okay.